The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick, and uh, it's draft week in Detroit, or as Roger Goodell says, in the D. I can't wait to hear him get booed yeah. by thousands of people in Detroit. Yeah, so NFL draft is in Detroit this week. Pretty exciting. Um, I'm not going to be down there. I at one point thought maybe I would be, um, but I'm not, so no big deal. But um we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs just briefly, and then we'll get into our, our full mock draft uh, in just a little bit. So NBA playoffs got underway. We had the play-in games at the end of last week. Um, we left off where we didn't know the Bulls and Heat played for their eighth seed game, and the Kings and Pelicans played as well. And the Heat beat the Bulls pretty handily, and the Pelicans somehow beat the Kings without Zion Williamson. Any takeaways from those, or you want to just get into the series? Just, just get into the series. Okay. Yeah. That's what I figured. So, on Saturday, the playoffs began, and the Cavaliers took care of business against the Magic. That was the first matchup of the day. Um, the Timberwolves blew out the Suns. That was an incredible performance. Um, and then the Knicks beat the Sixers, 111-104, to 104. And the Nuggets kind of scraped by the Lakers. They struggled a little bit early on, but they got the job done. Uh, those series also played last night. And then on Sunday, the Celtics beat the Heat in Game 1. The Clippers beat the Mavericks in Game 1. And the Bucks beat the Pacers, along with the Thunder beating the Pelicans by only two points. Um, then last night, Game 2 of a couple series... Cavaliers took care of business again against the Magic. They're up 2-0. The Knicks kind of narrowly beat the 76ers. They're up 2-0. And the Nuggets, also game winner from Jamal Murray, they're up 2-0. Uh, what is your takeaway from the playoffs so far, Malik? Uh, go New York, go New York, go. <laughs> I'm a Knicks fan right now. Yeah. The way they play basketball is everything I love about the sport. They play like an early 2000s team. And Jalen Brunson is like an early 2000s kind of guard. Mm -hmm. He's just overall skilled. He had, he's not even playing well so far in this series. And they're still winning because the chemistry is at an all-time high. Yeah, The defense is at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. And they just they just know how to play. Right. And they, they're in a certain type of zone. That I'm sure New York Knicks fans, it might remind them of like the 1999 Knicks, mm -hmm. where they didn't have a superstar per se. Right. But you had Latrell Sprewell, you had Marcus Camby, you had Allen Houston, mm -hmm. and then a bunch of gritty veterans around them that just played defense. Yeah. It's all and those knew guys. what they did, were supposed to do. Yeah. All those guys that are like just under the cusp of being like stars. Yeah. Like Allen Houston had a couple shots at it, kind of. Um, Latrell Marcus Spirol. Camby was like a one or two time All Star. Yeah, Latrell was kind of like the same way. Maybe yeah. Right. So they're all right there, which I think that's a really good comparison. Um, but yeah, I, I think the thing that surprised me about the Knicks is Mitchell Robinson being healthy has been a huge boon to their defense, and then now you're seeing OG Ananobi play good defense yeah. as well. And the crazy part is Isaiah Hartenstein played most of the crunch time minutes for yeah, him. Yeah, he did. Because he's still just as valuable as Mitchell Robinson, mm -hmm. which they'll they'll have a big decision to make in the offseason yeah. about what, who to keep, who to start. Mm -hmm. It'll be crucial. But yeah. I, I just love the way they play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I like the Knicks. They've been a fun team the last couple of yeah. years. Also, I was very wrong about Orlando, it seems, so far. Yeah, I, I mean, we were both <laughs> they, kinda... they could play better at home, but... They just look like they're not ready. Yeah, we were both kind of talking them up. And um, Donovan Mitchell has been kind of lighting them up. Um, he did struggle in the second half of the game yesterday. But I just figured they would have, like, I thought the Magic would have matched up better to be able to slow him down just a little bit. They scored 86 points. Yeah, I know. 
That's that's bad. Yeah. Um. So I don't I don't know what's going on with the Magic. Um. It seems like Paolo's played pretty well still. Um. I know Franz Wagner was a little inefficient last night. Um. But I'm hoping that they can get it going because this series is kind of the one that I don't I haven't been watching. But is the NBA TV series? Uh, those are the ones yeah. that people kind of make fun of. And, they know what they're doing. But I, I still enjoy the NBA playoffs overall. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll still tune in. Yeah. Uh, tonight we have game two of Suns Timberwolves, Pacers Bucks, and Mavericks Clippers. The Timberwolves and Anthony Edwards hey, man. annihilated the Suns. He put up 33. Um, Rudy Gobert was really good on defense. Um, Nikhil Alexander-Walker was on fire. Okay. He came off the Forgot bench and was that. getting yeah. shots. Yeah. Um, and then Kevin Durant, he tried his best, but uh, there was no supporting cast. I think Minnesota might be the second best team in the West. Yeah. They just might be. That would be pretty crazy because I was kind of nervous for them going into this series. Just because, again, the Suns have, you know, guys that have been there, been in big games. But Minnesota just looks flat out better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bradley Beal. He played 37 minutes, and he had 10 shots. He was one for three from the three. Even Grayson Allen, like, they only gave Grayson Allen three threes. He's been averaging, like, seven, eight a game to end the season. Um, So I don't know what's going on with their offense. Um, Even Kevin Durant only shot two threes. So, like, they just didn't put up a bunch. Like, Royce O'Neal led them in threes, four for eight off the bench. Um, So I think that's something that they need to to start looking at. But – um. Yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting series, and it's, it's surprising to see the Timberwolves actually doing something in the playoffs. Um, I don't know how Minnesota fans feel about this, but it must they must feel like they're in the twilight zone or something. Oh, it, it must be heaven. <laughs> yeah, absolute heaven right now. Mm-hmm. After one win in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all it takes sometimes. Um, just think when the Pistons get their first playoff. Let's win not in talk about them ten years <laughs> until it's time. Let's talk about some successful basketball. Uh, the Bucks are somewhat successful with Damian Lillard. 35 in the first half, zero in the second. Talk about a balance. One of the craziest games I've seen in a, in a long time. Balanced as all things should be, in the words of Thanos. Yeah. Um, so the Bucks looked pretty good against the Pacers without Giannis, by the way. Damian Lillard, I thought he was going to break Michael Jordan's 63-point <laughs> record, and then he comes out and gets a goose egg in the second half. Um, but it doesn't matter. Um, some other guys stepped up. Bobby, Bobby Portis Jr. played really well. Malik Beasley hit some clutch shots. Um, and then the Pacers, I I just don't know where they're going to get their production from. Pascal Siakam actually had a really good game. Um, I feel like I didn't hear from Tyrese Halliburton, as you know that. Since buddy. the All-Star break, he has been not so great. Yeah. Um, Miles Turner did decently well, but um, I just don't know if the Pacers have enough depth to get it done. And the Bucks don't have depth either, but I think they just have a little bit they higher. Have, they star at least power. have a trusted like seven to eight man rotation. Yeah, guys. That, I mean, these guys have like most of these guys are the same guys that were on the championship roster, so they at least have the experience. Um, and I think they they just have a little bit higher end talent. And when Giannis comes back, Pacers might just be toast. Unfortunately, wrong about the Pacers. Also, yeah, so far at least. Right. Um, also, kind of wrong about the Mavericks. Thought the Mavericks were going to be a little bit better. I, I think they just had a bad first game, honestly. I'm hoping the Clippers so. were ready. Yeah, it's weird that they they did it without Kawhi. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm I'm starting to root for Russ now. <laughs> I I enjoyed this version of like late stage mm-hmm. accepting my role, giving everything for my team, Russ. Okay, I like it. That's I don't hate it. Um, I'm hoping the series gets a little bit better. That's for sure. The thing that I think scares me the most, though, is that the Ma- if the Mavericks continue to struggle, it's just going to ke- keep building that narrative of, like, Luka that, like, he might not be the guy that can lead you to a championship, as good as he is. Or he still doesn't have a very good roster around him. It's also a possibility. Which is true. But hard to can say. Can you imagine if they still had Jalen Brunson? Or Chris Sad. Tops. Sad. If they had Porzingis. Well, it honestly, it just didn't fit with him in – Porzingis, so. But will he? Fit? At least they played a few seasons. Even though Porzingis was unhealthy half the time, would he? Would he have fit with Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, and Jalen? Well, Brunson look at Jalen Brunson did work. <laughs> it was working a little bit. Yeah. So they, 
It's just tough. I don't know. I'm starting to That's have, all Mark Cuban. I'm starting to have some doubts. That's all I'll say. I'll never doubt you, Luca. <laughs> don't let them put you down. Um, and then tomorrow night, we have Heat and Celtics game two, along with Pelicans Thunder game two. Uh, Celtics sweep? That's Probably. Like they completely destroyed the Heat. And although, shouts out to Jaime Jaquez, man. I still mm. love his game. And he tried his hardest to get them back in the game. He tried. Yeah. That could be another one, though, where the Heat did struggle in that game a lot. So they, they might have a fighting chance. But Celtics, pff, I'm almost ready to just put them in the Eastern Conference Finals. Maybe the NBA Finals. Oh, and Thunder in five. I think okay. New Orleans might pull one out at home. But the Thunder, I think even, Orleans, even with their youth. I think New Orleans is more likely to get one on the road. <laughs> it, it might be possible. Who knows? <laughs> they almost got them game one. I think if yeah. they would have gotten them game one, I think they might have had a, a decent chance to maybe do something. But... Uh, losing a close game like that kind of stinks, and I think the Thunder will be be pretty ready for the next game. Yeah. But uh, you can't trust CJ McCollum in the playoffs anymore. It I, seems I, think, I think it's close like to over. The thing that I liked though is that we mentioned Jonas Valanciunas before about the playing game. He came up big in that last game against the Thunder. Um, His physical presence is going to do something against Chet. Yeah, but Chet is still just overall more talented. Right. Um. So we'll see from there. Um, I don't really care who wins that series because obviously I like the Pelicans, but Thunder are fun, fun team to watch as well. So, yeah, playoffs are underway. Go Knicks, and uh, we'll see what happens. And and I I'm almost speechless how happy I am that the Lakers lost in such a heartbreaking fashion. Oh. We got to get to the draft, but I, I just a just a small round of applause. Yeah, for that disgusting Darlingham coaching performance sitting ad and lebron and putting that terrible lineup in losing a 20 point lead yeah and i don't even care about them missing the d'angelo russell foul mm-hmm. that happens in the playoffs yeah you Jokic, blew a big lead and you choked Jokic had like what 27 20 rebounds 10 assists or something like that it's Listen, insane he's the he's the best <laughs> it's insane. he is the best um so yeah and they they were in the first game a little bit too until the end so it's nice to see the Lakers come up close and still fail. Love it. So Love every minute of it. All right. Let's get to the NBA draft. NBA. <laughs> the NFL draft. Uh, a little correction. <laughs> I do not want to be ready for the N- NBA draft. NFL draft. Um, the NFL draft, like we said, is on Thursday. It's in Detroit. Should be pretty exciting. The best part of all, which I didn't think of until somebody mentioned it on Twitter just the other day, and I don't know how this flew over my head. Chicago has the number one pick in Detroit. That's going to be yeah. awesome. The Bulls are going to be even more intense. Yeah, the number after one Roger Goodell steps up. The number one pick is going to get booed out the building. Yes, which is going to be fun, and he's going to get that for the rest of his career, hopefully. Um, so yeah, we decided that because of last year, I got Detroit's pick. We would give Malik Detroit's pick this year. Can we just uh, remind the people who you took? No, let's not. At- <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> remember your second, myself. Your your first pick. We uh, re- refreshed our memories with who. Uh, we took, and he had the Lions picks. He took Jalen Carter with the sixth pick, which yeah. wasn't terrible. Yeah. But uh, with the 18th pick. <laughs> Apparently, I took Quentin Johnson. <laughs> so, you know. Now, we hope he improves and becomes better. I'm, But I'm, he's shaping up to be one of the modern-day big-time rod receiver busts. Perhaps I'm like the modern-day NFL GM. I about 50% hit rate, and that's yeah. a good GM. So, well, you should look at the rest of that. <laughs> later and see what picks you made too we will um all right so you're gonna get the number one pick which you did have last year but we're going based off the detroit pick yeah i don't really care about getting the number one pick um so i I know you don't want to pick the bears number one i know you don't want to (laughs) you don't want to make them happy no oh and my my decision is different from consensus so um with the number boy with the number one pick malik uh, take it away just out of curiosity now that you said that who would you take ahead of caleb williams I would take who I'm taking at number two. That's all. Oh boy. Okay. That's just me, and I don't. I I have no basis off of it. It's just. So it's a just feel. it's just a gut feeling. Yeah, it's oh. just a gut feeling. You, we should do a draft day sequel. Maybe we should. And just both of us just rattling off crazy trades and picks. We have to that try to remember. So realistic, like, it's crazy. Towards the end of the NFL season or something like that. All right. So take it away, Chicago Bears fans. <laughs> You've been waiting for this. For your entire lives, <laughs> there are people that have never seen, well, not just 
Bears fans today. Bears fans have never seen an elite Bears quarterback. Mm-hmm. Isn't that still just out of control? Yeah. The Cardinals had Kurt Warner for two years, mm-hmm. and they made a Super Bowl. Yep. Pretty much every franchise, what franchise besides the Bears has had no, like either, even like high level quarterback. Isn't there still Jay some, Cutler is like as good as it got. Yeah, and isn't there still some crazy statistic where no Bears quarterback has ever thrown more than like thirty touchdowns or something like that? No Bears quarterback has ever thrown over four thousand yards. Either. Yeah, there's like weird. <sighs> Bad, tough stats. Years and years and, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. There's, you thought you had the bright spot with Justin Fields. Yeah. But then you realized you had nothing around him. Mm-hmm. And that hurt his development. You got DJ Moore that helped him, but it still didn't help enough. Yeah. Because there were multiple years of no development. Mm-hmm. Even though he was a high-level runner with the football. Justin Fields has been traded to Pittsburgh. Chicago has made it clear that they're going for a specific guy. This guy has a ridiculous level of talent. Mm-hmm. Started at Oklahoma, took Spencer Rattler's job, finished as the starter, transferred to USC and put up crazy numbers the past few years. He has the ability to make some insane throws. Patrick Holmes <laughs> type of ability. That's the last time I'll say it. Like, step out of the pocket, move into the left, chuck it 60 yards on the dime type stuff. Mm -hmm. Run around, throw it to the corner of the end zone right where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Like, off balance. Those those types of crazy plays that only a few guys on earth can make. Yeah. Now, this is the NFL. Everybody can't do that. But he could be that guy. And that's why the Chicago Bears are taking Caleb Williams, number one. Yep. Quarterback from USC. Will yeah. he live up to it? Who knows? It's the Chicago Bears. Mm-hmm. They've ruined a lot. <laughs> yeah. Chicago has ruined so much. But they did add DJ Moore last year. They added yeah. Keenan Allen in this offseason. They're expected to maybe take another wide receiver in this draft. No. God, the football gods only know why they paid Cole Komet like they paid him. Yeah. <laughs> they also got <laughs> Gerald Everett, top right? Five tight, he's not even a top five tight end. They also got Gerald Everett. I think so. Um, but yeah, Cole Komet is making too much money, but they did get Keenan Allen. Mm-hmm. They also have DeAndre Swift. Yeah. So they have which, weapons which around was, him. Which was a weird decision to have DeAndre Swift. Yeah. But yeah. They got weapons around him. So, you know, he should be able to thrive, you would think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think their offensive line has is, is been improved. Um, I wouldn't say it's like great yet, but yeah. I think that's kind of the consensus pick right now. Um, at number two, Washington. Man, they're already starting to have to retool. Can I say something before you make this <laughs> yeah, pick? Yeah, go for it. I, I kind of wish I was, like, in the four spot because I would consider, like, moving back to four. You think so? And letting the Cardinals just jump up and take Marvin Harrison. Because if you can get a few extra picks, you can still get the quarterback you want mm-hmm. if you move back to four. I, I think so. So my thought process here is Arizona already knows these top three teams want a quarterback. Yeah. So why do they need to move up for a wide receiver? True. Just a thought. True. And I'm not saying that you're wrong or anything. I would almost think as I mean, what if what if the Patriots go ahead and take Marvin Harrison instead of a quarterback? That's that is possible. Yeah. And that might throw things off. But there's some people that think Malik Neighbors is pretty close to Marvin Harrison, so maybe they'd be okay with it. It again, we don't know what GMs are thinking. But if I was Arizona, I would almost be thinking the same thing as what you're thinking for Washington. I would move back and say, whoever really wants Marvin Harrison, I think this is a deep enough wide receiver class, yeah. I'll take a couple extra picks, get somebody just a little bit later. Maybe. Um, I think that's what's going to be interesting about this draft. I think there could be some big trades, um, potentially, which could really make things interesting. Um, in my scenario, if I'm Washington, I'm staying where I'm at, and unfortunately I need another quarterback because Sam Howell just it didn't really cut it. Um and I think it would be really funny if they drafted Drake May because then they have the two Carolina guys, but that's not where I go. I'm not a I'm not the biggest Drake May fan. I just again, it's kind of a gut feeling. I, I haven't watched every single tape or a ton of tape on these guys. Um but I'm like in my scenario with a young team that I have, I'm going with what I think is the most upside with Jaden Daniels. I think 
I think if he can fill out a little bit more, because I think that's that's some people's concern is that he's a little leaner um, for his size. I think if he could get a little bit stronger and just built up a little bit, he could be a nightmare for teams. Um, and the, what we saw last year, the problem with Washington is their offensive line is awful. Sam Howell was the most sacked quarterback in the NFL. Um, he's mobile. He's pretty mobile. Um, but I think Jaden Daniels just gives you another dynamic to be able to get get out of the pocket and get away from from sacks. Um, because, again, I don't think their offensive line is completely up to snuff just yet. Um, but you have Brian Robinson in the backfield that can take the load off of you, kind of take some pressure off the quarterback. But then when you need to throw it, you got um, Terry McLaurin, you got Jahan Dotson still there. I don't know who their third wide receiver is going to be since they I let go. I think Curtis Samuel signed with somebody else. Yeah, he's with uh, Buffalo. Yeah. So they'll have to figure out what their third wide receiver is, whether they get that in the draft or something. But they have good weapons on their offense. And I think Jaden Daniels just adds – such a dynamic to a team that, I mean, Washington needs to hit, try to hit a home run. So I think they need to take the big risk and just go for Jaden Daniels. So here's my thing with Jaden Daniels. I think there's a chance he could be Teddy Bridgewater that can run. Yeah. And if that's what he is. He's not a number two. Yeah. He's a good quarterback. Like, do you remember how good Teddy Bridgewater was at Louisville? Yes. He was a, like a top three quarterback in college football his last year. Mm -hmm. Now, Jaden Daniels does have some more talent. But I don't know how great his arm is. I don't know how accurate he'll really be on the NFL level. Yeah. And even though he can run, he's not like a Lamar Jackson runner. Right. Like, he's not about to go out here and break tackles and – have super highlight plays every single time mm -hmm. he takes off and he takes hits. Yeah. He does not know how to just take a playoff mm -hmm. kind of like Robert Griffin, the third esque. Yeah. So I, I've got some fears with Jaden Daniels. Right. And that's why I said, I, I, I feel like he needs to just, he needs to get a little bit stronger because if you're going to do that, you got to be more like, like Josh Allen. Like you have to just have to be a little bit thicker. And be able to take those. Hits. There's, no way, do there's it. no way he could ever get close to. No, what Josh not it's just that idea, I guess. Like if you're going to be trying to take hits, um, you're either going to have to learn to not take hits, or you're going to have to bulk up a little bit. Um, yeah. Also, I'm I'm not really sure what type of offense yeah. you run with Jaden Daniels. Like, mm -hmm. do you just go with the LSU offense? Yeah. Do you run some type of pistol? Like, I, I'm not sure exactly what you run, mm -hmm. but. Can we agree that, like, you know, as far as, like, I mean, top picks, you're normally, on, you're, you know, you're on the worst team. But, like, Chicago kind of changed and made themselves look better. But can we agree that, like, Washington and New England just feel like it's going to be hard for them to turn around no matter who they take? Yes. That's the scary part. And that's what I, I was – I'm considering shaking things up completely with this third pick. But – just out of necessity of not having a legit quarterback ever since Brady left. Mm -hmm. In my logical brain, in my logical brain, in my head, I want to take Marvin Harrison. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go like half and half with my heart also. Yeah. And I'm just going to go ahead and take Drake May. Okay. Because if you put Marvin Harrison out there once again with no real quarterback, what are you going to get? It's going to be a lot of ugly games. Mm -hmm. I think it's still going to be ugly with Drake May. Whoever yeah. New England drafts could be set up for failure. <laughs> yeah, their offense is in a tough spot. Yeah, like I new brand new coach. We have no idea what they're going to look like from this point on. Mm -hmm. Their weapons aren't very good. I I just don't know. Yeah. Good luck, Drake May. I guess. <laughs> like I I whoever gets drafted to New England, I I just don't feel good for him. Mm -hmm. I do not feel good. Yeah, because I, I don't I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. I don't have a good feeling about it. <laughs> yeah, for anybody. Right. So I'm sorry, Drake May, but unfortunately, you have to go to New England, and mm -hmm. I like Drake May a lot. Hmm. I, I I like his like skill talent more than uh, Jaden Daniel, to be honest, Jaden Daniels. Well, how would you feel if? 
How would you feel if New England traded with Minnesota? Minnesota's been the one that's talked about to be moving up a lot lately. And they almost swap what their thoughts are. Like, a lot of people think the Vikings are going to move up and get J.J. McCarthy. What if New England goes back to 11? Minnesota comes up to three. Minnesota takes Drake May. And New England gets, you know, the leftover if J.J.'s still there or if Bo Nix is there or something. I feel like New England... New England fans would be so upset if they got one of the guys outside of the top three. I feel well, like they get so him, angry. Uh, if they got J.J. McCarthy, though, they get another Michigan quarterback. The fans, <laughs> I don't think they'd be very happy. <laughs> now, I I would have some confidence that J.J. could step in and have some presence there. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that that would be so tough. That would be really tough. So, I'm, I'm just going to go with the guy with the high upside. Okay. In the yeah big bag of tools, Drake May. Mm. Fair Hopefully enough. they can mold him into something great. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Arizona at four. Would it be a huge risk if they did that? What if I trade with the Giants? Wait, why do I no? I don't want to trade with the Giants. Never mind. They don't have anything they want. Uh, no, let's not do that. Does Minnesota actually trade up? Does do they? Does Arizona want to move back to eleven, potentially, or do they want to just hit? Is I, it possible they could miss on Harrison and and neighbors in that span? <sighs> Going all the way back to eleven. Yeah. I think they want – they have shown that they trust in Kyler lately. Uh, so, I think they stay put. I'm going to just draft Marvin Harrison and just, again, go with some chalk. I think people are talking about Minnesota moving up, and I think people are saying Arizona might move around. But I think people have kind of forgotten the hype around Marvin Harrison. And um, with getting rid of – um. Marquise Hollywood Brown, I think they're ready to get a new number one guy in there for Kyler. And Marvin Harrison would probably fit pretty darn good with that offense. Um, so I'm just going to keep it as is. And I'm going to have Arizona take Marvin Harrison Jr. How did the Chargers get the fifth pick? I know, right? It's crazy. I'm kind of confused. Justin Herbert gets hurt, and uh, they stink. They don't have a backup quarterback. Easton Stick fills in, and they struggle. This, I think, would be a good a good spot for a trade out. So this is Jim Harbaugh we're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah. This guy's about grit. He's about the grind. Mm-hmm. Mr. Who's got it better than us. <laughs> he stripped the receiving core. <laughs> he barely has a running back room. Mm-hmm. He's got Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, the, yeah. the Ravens running backs. He's got the Ravens running backs, which I'm sure he he loves mm-hmm. their mentalities. Yep. He, um, he knows all about them from his brother. <laughs> they need help all over the place. Yeah, they do. Including offensive line. Mm-hmm. And this could be a place where you you need receiver help yeah. deeply. But this receiver class is deep. Yes. And you could take multiple later. Mm-hmm. So I think Jim Harbaugh can't will not be able to resist going with the high level tough option. And Joe Alt is going at number five. Okay. To the I was about to say the San Diego Chargers. They should still be in San Diego. The LA Chargers mm. are taking Joe Alt from Notre Dame. It's a high level tackle. A guy that maybe you can put him there and he could be a starter for a decade plus. Yeah. We'll see. But, yeah, I, I think this is the move Jim Harbaugh would make. And I'm going to go with Joe okay. Alt to the Chargers. Fair enough. Um, this is where this is another spot that I think there's going to be a lot of rumblings. So why is J.J. McCarthy going to the New York Giants? Uh, I don't. <laughs> there's a why? lot of rumblings about it. Um, but I think this is where teams start playing cat and mouse, where it's like, does New York really want to – like? Does Minnesota really want to move up at this point? Now that like they've gotten past some of these teams, nobody's moved up. 
and the Gi the Giants are there, do they just dare the Giants to take JJ McCarthy and then have no one really fully around Daniel Jones or JJ McCarthy and you have to decide who's going to start there even though you just paid Daniel Jones, like the Giants are just digging themselves more holes if you let them do that. I would say that they would just stay put and I think the Giants might try to trade out, hope to get like maybe Vegas or somebody to move up so that Minnesota has to try to realign with that, I guess. Um, but I don't know what exactly would happen. Let's say... Let's just... I, I, you know what? I'm starting to think maybe there's not going to be that many trades. Maybe there won't be. Denver just got Zach Wilson. Vegas got Gardner Minshew. Maybe they're good at quarterback. Maybe they don't need one. Um, so the Giants are going to stay put. That's Maybe what Daniel do. Jones is the answer is what you're saying. Maybe. And we're going to give him. That's a that's a hell of an opinion you have there, Joey. Ooh, that's that a... Dan, Danny Dimes might be it. Or do I get really, are you sure? Do I get really weird here, though? Do we give. You could. Do we give Danny Dimes more. More stuff. Or do we continue to just become a defensive powerhouse? With no offense? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That That's going to win you a championship a, in 2024. With a slow-paced, I don't even know. What year do you think this is, Joel? They're going to have to get what some sort of it? running back. Is this 2000? This is the Giants we're talking about, okay? Even Eli Manning had weapons. I know he did. Clock is ticking, Joey. Yeah. What are you going to do? They'll just take Malik neighbors. They'll try mm. to prove that Daniel Jones can do something to show that they didn't make a mistake. Malik neighbors is a really good wide receiver. I think he deserves better than the Giants, to be honest. Um, I did really think about going Dallas Turner, though. Imagine you throw Dallas Turner into that, that defense, and they'd be hitting the ground running. They got, what, Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, and then you add Dallas Turner to that. Plus, what, Dexter Lawrence is still there, right? Dang. Like, that's crazy. Um, but, yeah, we'll go with Malik Neighbors. We'll play it safe. Um, and, yeah, Tennessee's on the clock with your pick. There's a receiver on the board that a lot of people think could end up being the best receiver in this draft. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if Chicago would want to jump up and try to snatch him. Hmm. Now that the two to others. To get Caleb Williams as many receivers and weapons as possible. Mm -hmm. But looking at Tennessee's needs, they could also take a receiver, but mm -hmm. deep receiver class. Yep. Their defense Will is Levis pretty needs help. Their defense is pretty suspect. The defense is suspect, but. With Will Levis being your starting quarterback. You got Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins. I, you need blocking help. You need receiver yeah. help. You need, you need help. So, do the Titans, would they trade back with Chicago and take a few extra picks? They might. They might be willing to do that. Joey, let's do it. I'm doing my first pick swap. Okay. The Bears are moving up to seven. The Titans are moving back to nine. Throw in a third and a sixth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And with the seventh pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the Chicago Bears are taking Romo Dunze. Okay. Wide receiver from Washington. You have DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, who's getting old and injury prone. Mm -hmm. So you don't know how many games he will play and if he will finish the season. Yeah. Romo Dunze is that security blanket. Yeah. He can do it all. Mm -hmm. He's 6'2", over 210, I think. He has a big body. He can move. He has great hands. I, he's, besides Marvin Harrison, he's probably the most well-rounded receiver in the draft. Yeah. Malik Neighbors might be the most explosive, but Romo Dunze can do, it, do everything well. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely see Chicago just investing and in doing everything they can to get their first elite quarterback and have a high-level offense just from the go. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, Chicago trades up a few spots, and they snag Romo Dunze from Washington. Okay. Um, Atlanta so has – is Malik Neighbor still on the board? No, I took him at six. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. Um, Atlanta – Three is, receivers in the top ten. Yeah. What a year. Which I think is pretty pretty possible. Um, unless, of course, somebody trades up to get a quarterback, potentially. Um, Atlanta's sitting at eight. And they're in an interesting position. Yeah. I, Raheem Morris, Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to get a lot of calls from Minnesota, Denver, and Las Vegas. I think those are the three teams that start to get nervous about the whole quarterback situation, depending on, you know, who they choose is their guy um, for the quarterback position of who they want. I just can't imagine Minnesota thinking that Sam Darnold is going to be their guy. I just can't. And maybe I don't know if Vegas is as in need, um, but Denver might be willing to move up as well. And I think Minnesota is going to race Denver to get that that pick. And I think I'm going to go with Minnesota. I think Atlanta and Minnesota are going to make the trade. So you'll get Atlanta so, at 11. So Minnesota moves up to 8. Yep. And this is where and I think... And the Falcons move back to 11. Yes. Okay. I think this is where they're going to get nervous and they're going to go and get JJ. Hmm. So they're going to take JJ. Oops. And if anything, he can even sit behind Sam Darnold for a little bit, get used to the offense. But I think he just has more upside. Um, he has the potential to be something really good. There's a ton of weapons there and there's some pressure taken off of him now that they have Aaron Jones as well. So he can kind of be more methodical like he was at Michigan um, with that offense, I think. And then of course you, you just have Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison to throw to. That's, that's pretty good company. Um, So I think it's a good fit for them. And uh, yeah, so they're going to go with JJ. So now Tennessee is on the clock now. At Tennessee's nine. on the clock. And going with the theme of protecting Will Levis, mm. who has a big body and I'm sure will try to run and try to be the big, strong quarterback, like you said, like Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. You need to keep him safe. Try to keep him in the pocket. And I'm going to go with J.C. Latham out of Alabama. Offensive tackle. Okay. Oops. Just yeah, keep keep it simple. Okay. Add some protection for your your young quarterback. Okay. Um. All right. So the Jets are up, and the Jets. I mean, obviously they need to be able to protect Aaron Rodgers a little bit, but they could use some more weapons for Aaron Rodgers as well. Um. So they have to decide what they, you know, what they really think they need. I think their offensive line has potential to get better um, without doing much, and I don't know if they need to take a swing on offensive line right this moment in the draft. And I don't know if originally, like a couple months ago, that they would have thought that Brock Bowers would have been here at 10. And I think they, at this point, somewhat run up to the podium and take Brock Bowers to just add that final missing piece for Aaron Rodgers to use um, because they're, they're kind of in an all in situation with Aaron Rodgers. So I think they just keep giving him weapons, more people to throw to. And I think Brock Bowers fits in pretty well there. Brock Bowers to New York. Yep. Makes more sense. So the Falcons are up at 11, huh? Yes. Uh, Raheem Morris. I think he's more of a defensive guy. Mm-hmm. Yes. You got your weapons on offense. You just signed your quarterback big money. You got B. John Robinson. You got your pieces on offense. Yep. So it's time to invest in the trenches. Mm-hmm. You need some big guys, maybe a fast guy off the edge. Huh. I'm d- deciding between two guys. Yep. And I'm not sure if this second choice will be as productive at that spot. Mm-hmm. So, you know what? I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go with this one. Give me Jared Verse, Florida State. 
Okay. Defensive end. Yeah. Get a guy that can rush with speed and power. A guy that's been flashing at Florida State for the past two years. Uh, I think he'll be a good – I'm not sure if he'll be like a elite, like 18, 19 sack guy. Right. But he should be a guy that can get you double-digit sacks consistently. Yeah. Jared versus that talented. Mm-hmm. And he plays hard. Yeah. So, yeah, Falcons drafting Jared Verse from Florida mm-hmm. State. Cool. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, and that's why I, I traded back. I think there was a lot of good options for them defensively um, at eight, and I couldn't see them all going right after another. So I think moving back just you know gives them maybe an extra draft pick and get basically the same guys they had a potential to get earlier. Um, Denver is at 12. What do you do here? Man. Listen. Th- the the four the top four off the board yeah and I assume you're not taking the shot at Bo Nix no at twelve and the so, hard, the yeah. weird part too is that they just got Zach Wilson which means nothing <laughs> but it's weird it's just like a depth right? piece I guess like so now like what are they trying to like I don't I don't know what Denver is doing listen yeah this this is opportunity to potentially trade and get more picks. Yeah. Because what is what is the good, the best thing right now? Mm-hmm. What's the best thing? Yeah. I don't know. Denver, Denver, Denver. Yeah. What are we doing? This is where I would like the, uh, li- <laughs> the Lions to trade up to 12. <laughs> um, are there any spots in the teens you, you think they could trade back in? I think there's probably yeah. some potential there. A um, the team you'd like to move up? Who is available that... Or is there a player you think they could just take and be happy with? Because they had they need several things. Yeah, they <laughs> they're do. they're they're officially rebuilding. I'm trying to see if there's a team that like really wants to make a splash, but it, it's kind of this is kind of a weird spot in the draft too for a lot of teams, um, because it all just depends on need. Um, let's go with who could they trade with. I think this would be a prime spot. I, I kind of agree. Um, I think we both know I'm more in the Michael Penix boat if I was going to take a quarterback here at 12. that I really didn't even – Yeah, I don't know why. The Michael Penix part always slips my mind. Mm-hmm. Like, he is right there. Yeah, but I yeah. think he's going to be the one that kind of falls. Um, True. So, you know what? Let's say who just needs to go all in. Who's lacking? Defensively. You know what? Maybe this is a little bit too oddball, but let's go with the Rams. Let's have the Rams. That's the 19th pick? 19th. Okay. So the Rams are going to trade with Denver. And the Rams are going to move up into 12. And The Rams are in a very weird spot. Yeah. The greatest player in franchise history and one of the greatest players of all time just retired. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why they're going to go with, I mean, on this board and probably my board, they're going to, so they still need to kind of protect Matthew Stafford a little bit too. Yeah. Shoot. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it is a, it's still a good trade up, but they have to decide, do they want to go, do they want to get a new defensive guy in Dallas Turner? Or do they go with one of the top linemen in uh, Fatanu or uh, Fashanu? Fashanu. Yeah, Fashanu. Um, Isn't that the guy from Penn State? Yes. Olu Fashanu? Yeah. Yes. Olu. Um, man, where do they go? Do, 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 do. I think their defense was surprising do, do, to them do, last year. Do, 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 do. I think they're going to go offensive line. Okay. Cool. How many more years of Stafford do they have? <sighs> Not much. I don't know. I don't know my offensive lineman prospects. Um, I don't know much about Fatanu from Washington. I just like that Olu Fashanu is 6'6 and gigantic. So I'm going to go with him, Fashanu. And I've heard more about him. But he's he's ranked lower in the ESPN rankings. But 
Olu Fashanu going to the Rams. I actually, you know, I don't hate that trade anymore now that I've thought about it. So, cool. So, Vegas is now at 13. Vegas is at 13. They're in another weird spot. <sighs> They're like Denver. Did they? Wait. Did they trade for a quarterback? They have Gardner they Minshew. Sign? Yeah, they, they have Gardner, so they have a bridge quarterback. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they're in love with the guys in this area. Yeah. I'm not sure if they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, man. You have a bridge quarterback. You have Aiden O'Connell behind him. Mm-hmm. Got a decent offense. Got a decent offense. They did lose Josh Jacobs, though. They're going to have Zamir White now. Yeah. I, I like Zeus White a lot. I, I think he can break out. They could use corner help. They could use O line help. But with Gard, Gardner Minshew, I don't know. Yeah. Huh, let's see. I don't think I'm going to trade. Okay. Could go good. Yeah, after the top three or four, the quarterback situation is just so interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it all depends on what these GMs think. I'm point. not going to take the quarterback in this situation because I think with the next pick, it would be a perfect setup. I don't even know if you're going to do it. Mm. But, you know what, There, there's been a lot of hype in this dude. People think he's the best corner in the draft. I'm going to go Kenyon Mitchell. Okay. Or Quinion Mitchell. I'm not sure which way how to pronounce it. We will see during draft night. Right. Yeah, I'm going to go Quinion Mitchell from Toledo. Uh, and six foot, 195. Really good size for a DB. Yeah. Now, he dominated the Mac. Mm-hmm. But talent comes from everywhere. I'm not going to judge him. Right. He dominated where he was, and that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. This guy's super talented. He's really quick. I'm 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 just gonna go with okay. Quinion Mitchell. Cool. Um, New Orleans at fourteen. I don't know what you were ensuing. Yeah, you're not gonna do what I, what was on my mind. Most <laughs> but, likely. Um, hmm. I think they also just want to bolster their defense, and I think I don't think Dallas Turner is gonna fall this far in the draft. Um. So I think if he was still there, I think New Orleans would be silly not to take him. Okay. Just to bolster their defense. Um, wow, why can I not think of – what's the name of their number one defensive guy? New Orleans is? Yeah. Been there forever. What position is he? Defensive tackle? Is he You're tackle? not talking about Cam Jordan, are you? Yeah. Yeah, he's a defensive end. Defensive slash, end. Yeah. yeah. So he's getting a year older. Not that Dallas Turner fills his role, but just another defensive stud as uh, their defense is getting a little older. They could also go corner, I guess, with Marshawn Lattimore getting a bit older too. But I'm going to go with Dallas Turner. I think he's the highest upside of the defensive guys left. Indianapolis at 15. I think Indianapolis could take a bit of a swing here. Okay. You got Anthony Richardson. Mm-hmm. You got a few receivers that you believe in. Could he use another weapon? Brock Bowers is already off the board. The top three receivers are gone. But there's a guy right here that I like a lot. Michael Pittman just got, didn't he get extended, I think? Yes. Uh, yeah, Michael yep. Pittman got extended. Uh, you drafted, um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the the short receiver from North Carolina last year that they drafted. Uh, Josh Downs. Yeah, I like Josh Downs so far. Uh, they have uh, Alec Pierce. Mm-hmm. I like him too. But after that, I don't know what depth you have. Alec Pierce has explosive moments, but I'm not sure if he's explosive as, as explosive as this guy. Okay. I'm going Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. That's a pretty big surprise. Yeah. I don't hate it. Just take a swing. 
Like, I, I'm looking at the prospects at other positions, and I'm not, like, flat out in love with anybody else. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe you could get O-line help or D-line help, but I think Anthony Richardson needs just as much firepower as he can so that he's he doesn't have to run around and get hurt some more. Yeah. You need him to be able to run around and throw the ball and stand in the pocket a lot of times and be, just be able to make throws. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going kind of outside of the box on that one. Okay. And I'm going to go Brian Thomas Jr. Cool. Giving him a guy that can take the top off and yeah, put more stress on the defense. And that can open up the run game some more too. Yeah. So, yeah, Brian Thomas Jr. off the board. Okay. Yeah, I don't hate that. Um. All right. So, Seattle is at 16. Um, Seattle needs, you know, kind of your, your basic, your basic needs. They could use offensive line. Um, they could use some defensive guys. Um, what do we got on the board? Um, you know, again, we talked about him last week, but actually, um, What's their secondary now? They have Devin Witherspoon. Um, who did they draft just last year? It was the other top guy, right? Wasn't Devin Witherspoon who they drafted last year? Was it last year? Yeah. Okay. Because two years ago, oh, it was, it was yeah. my guy Tariq Woolen. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Um, so they have Tar- Tariq Woolen, Devin Witherspoon. Hmm. Do they? No, nah, I don't think they go all in. I was thinking about Terry and Arnold, but I hate to see him go, but I'm going to take Leatu Latu here. Hmm. Um, I think just defensive edge help um, for Seattle would be good for them and bolsters up uh, closer to the front of their defense. And uh, their secondary has already been pretty good the last couple of years. Their offense doesn't really need anything besides maybe, like I said, some line help. Um so yeah, that's what I'll go with. Uh, Jacksonville. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna waste much time. They need some help in multiple areas, mm-hmm. and they could go O line, but I'm gonna go D line, and I'm going Byron Murphy from Texas. Okay big guy in the middle that can just wreak havoc mostly in the run game but also could help in the pass game help get those guys like Josh Allen and a few other pass rushers open lanes I like him a lot Mm -hmm. and I think he could be a major impact in the league and he could help in Jacksonville from day one pretty much yeah so yeah I'm going Byron Murphy okay Um, I think Cincinnati at 18 is also a, a fairly easy one um, they could go offensive line again to help Joe Burrow out, but I think one of their biggest weaknesses that they've had on defense has been cornerback. I think they just get up to the podium and take Terry and Arnold best okay. cornerback available when arguably could be one of the best. Um, there's a bit a debate between who the best corner is, but I think they would be pretty happy with Arnold. So now we got Denver at 19. I Denver appreciate. at 19. Yep. I yep. think this is a good spot <laughs> to walk up to the podium and select Michael Penix. Okay. With the 19th pick. Yep. I'm happy if I'm a Denver Broncos fan and you get Penix at 19. Yep. This dude was arguably the best quarterback in the country last year in college football. He put up big numbers. Now, it was a passing offense where they just chucked it nonstop. Mm -hmm. But his accuracy and his velocity on these passes were just ridiculous. Yeah. He was putting it right in the bucket over and over and over to a high-level receiving core, guys that got open often. But even when they weren't wide open, he still put it right where it needed to be over and over again. Yeah. He was always on time. He was always poised. He absolutely put up a master class performance against Texas Mm -hmm. in the um, college football playoff semifinal. Now, against Michigan, it was different. Yeah. That – uh, aggressive pass rush in those corners for Michigan made it a little bit harder. But those are the ups and downs of football. It is what it is. I still think he can be a quality NFL quarterback. 
I like his skill set. I like his arm. And I think Denver is getting a good quarterback. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, Michael Penix. All right. Um, Pittsburgh at 20. I think they're a little disappointed that Brian Thomas was taken. I think they would have liked somebody like that. And I don't think they're ready to reach on um, Xavier Worthy or Adonai Mitchell. And basically their b- next biggest need is center. And Graham Barton is sitting right there from Duke. Um, he's the best center in the draft. And they need help for either one of their quarterbacks, whoever yeah. they decide to start. So I think uh, Graham Barton is a great pick for Pittsburgh. Smart move. Miami at 21. They're in a weird situation. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not sure what the best option is for them. Like, I think part of it is just them being the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. Like, there, there's just a weird, like, a weird feel with the organization. Even though they're in the best spot they've been in in years. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't know whether Tua is your guy for the foreseeable future. You have Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. You have a super explosive offense. Mm-hmm. But in the playoffs, you can't, like, replicate that same thing you had in the regular season. Yeah. I think I might go with something to try and help their defense. And there is a guy here whose hype went through the roof after the combine. Mm -hmm. I believe he ran a 4-4-2. Just ridiculous for a defensive end. Yeah. I'll go Chop Robinson. Okay. Out of Penn State. Now, he this might be a little bit of a reach because he is still kind of raw, but his athleticism and his just overall power-speed combination is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, he didn't need a bunch of moves and skill to be able to flash in one of the best conferences in college football. Yeah. And it's up to coaching to figure that out in the NFL. So, if you can mold Chop Robinson into something, he could be a perennial pro bowler mm-hmm. and an all-pro guy. So, I'll, yeah, I'll go Chop Robinson to the Miami Dolphins. Okay. Uh, Philadelphia is up next, and they did lose Jason Kelsey. So, if, you know, if Graham Barton was available here, I think they would have ran up to the podium. Isn't um, Jackson Powers there? Yeah, I'm he is sure. also yeah. available. So, that's an option. Um, And I don't know where their other picks lie throughout their draft. So, I don't know if they feel like the offensive line – is good enough that they can fill somebody else in um, or if they want to solidify that offensive line. But for me, I feel like still one of their bigger problems is their secondary. And I know they're bringing um, CJ Gardner Johnson back um, after he left Detroit, Darius Slay, another year older. So they have the pick of the litter between Cooper DeGene and Nate Wiggins. It depends on who they like. Me personally, I just like the energy that Cooper DeGene brings to a team. And I think Philadelphia kind of needs that. And I think that their fan base could get behind somebody like He's that. He's a plus in the return game, too. Yeah. So I think Philadelphia is going to go Cooper DeGene at 23. That is interesting. I like that. You mean 22? 22. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So we're back to Minnesota. Yep. They got another pick. And. While you were going through that analysis, I pretty much uh, sewed up who I wanted now that they have J.J. McCarthy. And um, to be fair, just as, you know, and as if, potentially they may have had to give up this pick to move up. Yeah. But in this scenario, we're not worrying about it. Yeah. So there are multiple Michigan guards <laughs> that they could select and just put right with J.J. And Zach Zinner is the highest rated guy. <clears throat> from Michigan. Mm-hmm. But instead of slightly reaching for Zach Zinner, who's coming off a major injury against Ohio State, even though he's looking really healthy in his pre-draft workouts, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the highest rated guy, and I'm just going to go Cooper BB from Kansas State. Okay. Yeah, go with the highest rated guard, a guy that can help J.J. McCarthy keep him healthy in the pocket and uh, help him move around and uh, extend plays. He's really good throwing on the run. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, just some O line help for the new young quarterback. Okay, so we got Dallas at twenty four. Dallas is 
Dallas is Dallas. They are something what, else. What, what else do you say? I don't know. Um, man. You, you got to pick Xavier Worthy. You got to. You think so? You, this is Jerry Jones. What is Jerry about to pick? You, what is Jerry about to do? Even though he lost uh, Tyron Smith. So you could go O-lineman, but who's the O-lineman? That's kind of what I thought. Too. We're losing Tyron Smith. Um, Who is the guy? Well, technically, we forgot, or our draft forgot about uh, Troy Fatanu, so he's a top-rated offensive lineman. Yeah. Also, uh, Taliesi Fuaga from Oregon State is also right there. Mm-hmm. So multiple options if you want to go with the more yeah, conservative pick. Yeah, the non-Dallas pick, basically. Yeah. I-, I agree with that that sentiment. Um, I'm just going to go based off of what we have. And if the 11th best prospect is still sitting there at 24, I think, I don't think Dallas is that dumb. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, so I'm just going to go with Troy Fatano just to get him off our board, basically. Okay. The Green Bay Packers. They have a quarterback that finished the last half of the season basically as the best QB in the league. Mm-hmm. He lit it up, upset the Dallas Cowboys. The only day I'll ever root for the Green Bay Packers was that day. They got receivers. They got their quarterback. Mm-hmm. Their offense is kind of set right now. Yeah. They could take a running back later maybe, but right. for the most part, they got their guys. And, yeah, let's look on the defensive side. What do we have left <laughs> on the defensive side in terms of top-rated guys? So, we got a few corners. Uh, I don't know if I'd take Kool-Aid McKinstry yet. Darius Robinson from Missouri. Devondre Swim. I'm going to do it, yeah. I'll take Devondre Sweat from Texas. Okay. The second big guy. Uh... Yeah. I think this is a position they've kind of somewhat ignored for a few years. Now, they've still improved, but, yeah, hit that big guy in the middle of the defense. I I trust that pick. Okay. Yeah, defensive tackle to Vondre Sweat. Yeah, he's uh, fallen quite far yeah. with everything going on, so... Okay, Tampa Bay at 26. Yikes. What the heck does Tampa Bay do? They're in a, a weird spot themselves. Um, Actually, you know, maybe it's not that weird. Uh, they just got rid of Carlton Davis. They're going to take Nate Wiggins. Clemson. Yeah. Much easier than I thought it was going to be. I like it. I think they'd be very happy with that pick, especially being at 26. Arizona's back up at 27. I think they take another receiver, and I think they take a swing on the guy that broke the combine 40 record. Jesus. <laughs> Listen, do, I don't hate do you it. doubt that he's going first round after Not breaking really. the combine record? Listen, Xavier Worthy. And to they're they're picking him to possibly upset Bills fans as well, yeah. To not get him or something or KC fans, I think it'd be kind of funny. It would be. There's always one pick like that in the first round, mm-hmm. or at least two, honestly, two or three. None of Arizona's other wide receiver picks have really worked out in the last couple of years. So Michael Wilson might be a, a yeah. decent receiver. Like yeah, Michael Wilson looks like he could be a really good possession guy. Mm-hmm. Marvin Harrison is the number one. <clears throat> Who do you got that's going to take the top off? Yeah, yeah, it would be a yeah. pretty. It could be a very dynamic receiving core if that turned out to be what they do. So I don't. Yeah, I don't hate it. I'm not. I'm not knocking it. Xavier Worthy to the Arizona Cardinals. <sighs> so that leaves uh, Buffalo up, and again, a team that's kind of in an odd spot. They just got rid of Gabe Davis. Got rid of Steph Diggs. They desperately need wide receiver, in my opinion. And I know who I'll take here, but let's let's see who you go with. Yeah. I you know, like I would love 
for Keon Coleman to get enough love. I just don't know if he's going to. That would be crazy if he went this high. Yeah. But I, I think, like, the scenario, he works better in, like, the Bills' offense, uh, potentially. But um, I think at this point they just go with the best available wide receiver, and that's A.D. Mitchell. That's exactly who I was going to take. Yeah. yeah. Bigger receiver allows you to go up and get it. Somebody that um, Josh Allen can kind of rely on, and that leaves uh, – Khalil Shakir still kind of underneath routes. Um, and Curtis Samuel now is the gadget guy, like he's always been for his career. But I think that he gives them that big receiver that they like to have on the outside. All right. You get the Lions pick at 29. And here we are. <laughs> and basically get the pick of the we litter. We made it. For whatever they've wanted. We've made it. Almost all the best pass rushes are gone. Mm-hmm. You took Leia too, lot too. Yep. Again, I would love for him to fall there, but I just uh, I don't know. The best defensive tackles are basically off the board, even though there's a guy sitting here. I'm not sure how much of a reach it would be, but he is a high level player. Mm. So I have it between two guys, honestly. Okay. And as the Lions fan, I I want to get your opinion. Okay. Now. Lions fans on social media have all been up crying and applauding taking Kool-Aid McKinstry at 29. Right. And he's right here. Mm-hmm. But let's have a little talk about Jazan Newton from Illinois. Okay. Defensive tackle. This dude is a problem. Mm-hmm. Like, he wreaks absolute havoc. Pass rushing, running, I mean, stopping the run. He is an overall baller at the defensive tackle position. Big Ten guy, seems like a Dan Campbell kind of guy. Yeah. Obviously, I don't know his his culture fit that Detroit is so worried about, but yeah. What do you, What do you think between the two options? Between the two of Kool Aid, they just they just made several DB signings. Kool Aid and Jerzon. Of, of course, they could use another. Yeah. But if you hit on a guy like this, mm-hmm. and you got Hutch. And Aline McNeil. And Aline McNeil. Yeah. I think you do it. Because James Houston is kind of that that plug and play kind of guy. He's not going to play every down. Yeah. Um I think it definitely would be fun. Yeah. And, and uh with uh the the dude from Cincinnati they just signed. The defensive tackle. Oh, DJ Reader, yeah. Yes. Him having mm. multiple injuries in the past few years. Yes. This would be a rotational option mm-hmm. to keep him fresh. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so yeah. just from the Lions fans' perspective, what do you think Jerzon would probably be a more exciting option? or I think he would be more exciting, yes. Um, again, I know Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid would be fun for the yeah. almost the memes. but the, the blue Kool-Aid stuff would be insane. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think there's still some other corners that you could maybe get later. Um, possibly. And, uh, yeah, I think I, again, I think the Lions are in a place where they can start making swings for guys. So I, I like Jerzon. I'm going Jerzon Newton. Okay. Defensive tackle from Illinois. Yeah, just another guy. Keeps DJ Reader healthy. Keeps him. That, that. That defensive tackle rotation, that's something serious in the NFC North. Yep. Potentially. And it's perfect for now the Lions have their new Jerzons. Yeah. <laughs> new Jerzons. It, it didn't really work, but I oh, tried. I wish I had a soundboard with me. <laughs> I'd hit the boos or the <laughs> Um, The other thing I'll say, though, in this in this particular draft that we're doing, Amarius Mims would be a fun pick for the Lions, too. 6'8", just huge <laughs> out of Georgia. Yeah. I love the giant offensive lineman. Um, so if he was there too, like I wouldn't mind taking an offensive lineman. Like I said before, like Jackson Powers Johnson, I wouldn't mind. Again, I I don't really think the Lions could really go wrong unless they do some crazy thing that makes you nervous. But Their track record the past two years, what what can you say? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's true. Um, Baltimore is up. What does Baltimore do? They lost a lot of guys, it seems. 
They lost some corners. Um, they lost. Who else did they lose? I'm trying to think specifically. Hmm. They uh, they could use just some help in general. Hmm. Do they need offensive line help? Not necessarily. I think I think Baltimore might take Kool Aid hmm. if the Lions pass up on him because I'm trying to think who else they lost. They lost Geno Stone. I remember that. Their biggest needs are apparently edge, corner, offensive guard, wide receiver, safety. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Kool-Aid for Baltimore. I think that would be a good fit for them. Get some more corner help. Uh, their secondary has been kind of injury-ridden the last few years. So let's go with Kool-Aid. Nice and easy. Do the San Francisco 49ers need anything else? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what do they need? I, I can see this being a place where a team from the second round trades up yeah. and probably maybe jumps into this pick. I'm not sure who. Well, okay, but, yeah. I, I will say the the trend has been are they going to be able to keep Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel? So they may True. need wide receiver. That is a good point. They could take wide receiver. That's a really good point. This also says O-line and corner. Mm. that's like every team yeah every team it's like oh if you don't have any needs o-line and corner is always good to have depth for deep receiver class mm -hmm. there's a few guys right here these two guys as the last two picks of the first round to me would be incredible hmm. I'm, I'm just gonna mention them malachi, malachi corley out of western kentucky and lad mcconkey from georgia Everybody has been saying we don't want Lad McConkey to go to Kansas City mm -hmm. because it would be a nightmare for everybody else. And I kind of want Lad McConkey in Kansas City. <sighs> San Francisco took kind of a swing on Brandon Ayuk. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew how good he would be after like one good season at Arizona State. Yeah. You know what? Take the swing. I'm taking Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. Wow. Yeah. He's known as potentially the best uh, after catch guy in this draft, yards after catch. Hmm. He's just a playmaker after he gets the ball. Okay. So, yeah, just a, another weapon. Yeah. Another weapon for the last pick of the draft QB, Brock Purdy. Mm -hmm. And just like everybody knew would happen. Here Kansas, we go. <laughs> Kansas City yes. gets. It's the, happening. I mean, well. I don't know, like, again, I haven't done enough research to know all these receivers inside and out. Everybody's got a different favorite. Ladd McConkey is a top three uh, route runner. But either way, Kansas he, he City open. has a pick of the litter, yeah. whether they like Xavier Leggett, Ladd McConkey, maybe even Keon Coleman. I think Troy Franklin, potentially. I think that's betting on upside. Yeah, it But is. betting on a guy... A championship team that well, wants somebody right now. Exactly. What does KC do? Yeah. And they they got rid of Marquez Valdez Scantling, right? I'm not 100 percent sure. I think they did. Troy Franklin's a speed guy. They like speed guys. Do they go for another speed guy? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately they do want somebody that's just reliable for Patrick Mahomes. Somebody that can make those easy routes, get open, get the easy yards, and if you have Lad McConkey and Travis Kelsey sounds like a nightmare over the middle. Yeah, and Lad McConkey also has the speed to take uh like ten yard route like fifty yards. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, let's just go with the chalk and we'll go Lad McConkey to round out the first round. On to the second no. <laughs> <laughs> um so that should should we how much time do we have left? Well, we already went over and I usually expect okay. it to go over right. for um draft talk. So Whatever you want to talk about, we can talk about. Just, I was just going to say any particular guy you'd want the Lions to look at after the first round, um, just to end it. Where do the Lions have – they have pick – okay, so they have 29 yeah, they in the have, second round as well. 29 in the second round, and, then and early, nine in the third. Early third. And yeah, then, and then they don't pick again until the fifth. Until late. So it's basically those other two picks yeah. um, that they have. Anybody again, in particular? 
I wouldn't hate for the Lions to use one of those late round picks and move up somewhere mm. along it's the lines. To do it. Um, as far as guys that could maybe be there when they get back, you know how I feel about Mike Sanders. Still, I would love if they took him with that second round. Pick. I'm with you. I I do yeah. like the Sanders still pick. I think he would fit really well. Um, f- again, fits that slot corner that we kind of need. Yeah. Um, Carlton Davis. Emmanuel Mosley, Amik Robertson might be kind of a, a slotted guy every once in a while, kind of a plug-and-play corner. I like Chris Abrams' drain from Missouri a lot, too. Okay. Just in terms of corner options. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Who could be there? Wow. ESPN has Jackson Powers Johnson at 58. Wow. If wow. that was to happen, that's right where the Lions pick. Yeah. I, I'm, I'd take Jackson Powers Johnson in the second round easy. Um, but other than that, we got, we got like Christian Haynes out of UConn, the guard. Um, I wouldn't hate again. I I like getting, uh, offensive line help for the lions. I think, um, let's see who else is defensively around that second area that we could take a swing on. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't hate wide receiver either. I was just about to say. There, there are options. Could you imagine if in like that third round area, Jalen Polk from Washington was still there? <laughs> look, bro, look, this receiver <laughs> yeah. class is so deep. I know. Like, it is. Jermaine Burton mm-hmm. is like down as like the 11th best receiver maybe. Yeah. Right after him is Jalen Polk. Jacob Cowing from Arizona is a like wizard with the ball in his hands. He's super – there's so many options, man. Yeah. No, yeah, I I would not. Brendan Rice from USC. Mm-hmm. He's there. Jalen McMillan. It's, it's so many options. Yep. Johnny Wilson is 6'6", six, six, like 230. Mm-hmm. It has like the most inconsistent hands ever, but he's there. Yep. Yeah, and it goes on and on. Shouts out. I'm happy for where, whoever drafts Luke McCaffrey. <laughs> he was just a production monster at Rice. He's, yeah. he's a really good receiver. And he ran like 4'4", four, four, at mm-hmm. the Combine. Yeah. How do you feel about Adisa Isaac out of Penn State? The edge. Adisa Isaac. I feel like he didn't fully live up to his talent, but he was just like good. That's he was where, just a good Big Ten defensive end. That's where it makes me nervous because it, well, not nervous, but like the Lions, it seems like they like to get those guys that at one point were projected to be better. Um, I mean, I guess they, they more so go after those guys in free agency, but, and I mean, think about it too. If, if you didn't take Malachi Corley at 31, which I, I don't know if that's going to happen in the real draft, but they have him at 93 on ESPN's rankings. Hmm. The Lions could get Malachi Corley. Now, I know he kind of, you know, is kind of the Amon Ross St. Brown role. Yeah, I, I think he's going to drop into the second, but Malachi Corley. Think if it's Amon Ross St. Brown, Malachi Corley, Sam Laporta, and Jameson Williams. You got... Crazy over the middle stuff going yeah. on, and Jamison Williams can still just run go rounds. But I think they could be pretty, uh, make some pretty pretty interesting, um, offensive schemes with a guy like that. So, again, I I love the options are there. The options being yeah. able to just pick almost anybody, um, I think is pretty cool. So, yeah, I don't know. Is there anybody specifically that you were thinking of? I I pretty much said the guys I like. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah, the draft is on Thursday. Again, the other thing I was going to say too, Zach Zinner, I think is another good one for the Lions. He fits perfectly. He doesn't have to play right away. He can sit, you know, who knows where he would have been if he was healthy. Um, so that's a really good, um, spot that the Lions could maybe take him as well. Even like the third round. So, yeah. Oh, I just saw that. Like, 108 is Zach Sinner, and then Jermaine Burton is at 114. Like, this is, it, There's so much talent in this draft. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, again, Lions have whatever they want. Thursday night, NFL draft in the D. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Um, and, yeah, I. it's going to be great. Um, unfortunately, next week I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be in Myrtle Beach soaking in the sun, hopefully. Um, so we'll have to do our draft recap in two weeks, but um, I'm excited to talk about all the new scenarios, 
how wrong our mock draft was. Yeah. And um, we'll give an update on the NBA playoffs. Should be basically into round two by the time we come back. But, um, yeah, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Shouts out to Dustin May. He's tearing it up on the portal right now, turning things around in Michigan basketball.